Hi there. Um, I'm here to talk to you today a little bit about drop bags um, for picking up a checkpoint of ultras. Um, I'm going to try and cover the sort of thing that I think you need to think about for your strategy for a drop bag, how you can make it as efficient as possible, how you can make sure that you cover everything you need to, and a little bit about what I put in my drop bag for these kind of races. The first thing to say is that you need to make sure that there's nothing in your drop bag that you should have as compulsory kit that you're carrying for the race. If you accidentally forget something or you decide to put something in your drop bag that really is compulsory kit that you need to be carrying, that's a potential disqualification or at least a penalty. And you need to be really sure that you're carrying everything that you need in your drop bag. The way I approach drop bags is that I try to put things in my drop bag that will um, be race ending if they fail or I need a replacement. Um, the, that covers things like food, spare food and replacement food for the second half of the race. So I'm not carrying all my food for the entire race. Um, it covers things like kit. So if I've got spare waterproofs, I'll take that. If I've got a spare bag, I'll stick that in. Spare shoes, I'll put a pair of change of clothes in. All that head torch, all that sort of thing. Um, and I'll go through that in a bit more detail now, but the, the categories that I put into are things that I know I'm going to need and things that, emerge, things that are emergencies. I also then often put a treat in as well. Like I really love um, something like a milky coffee or a chocolate milk halfway through a race. It's the sort of thing you don't often get at checkpoints and the sort of thing that really sort of perks me up and uh, gives me something to look forward to at, uh, at the checkpoint, which is really nice. So the first thing to think about when you are looking at your drop bag is what you're actually going to use for your drop bag. Now, you're going to use a plastic bag, you're going to use something more substantial, you know, what is it actually going to be? Now, I thoroughly recommend using a proper bag, probably one that's waterproof, like a waterproof hold-all. Um, try not to use a plastic bag, these things can rip and um, lots of people do use them, so they're often not as identifiable. Um, you need to check what the limits are for the weight for the race as well for your drop bag. So often races have limits on size or weight that you can put in your drop bag and maybe also what you can put in the drop bag. Um, some, some say about poles that if you're going to take poles you need to carry them the whole way for example. Um, I like to use one, like I said, I like to use one of those waterproof um, hold all bags. And I try to always make sure I've written my name on it or put something on it that's really identifiable, like a previous race sticker. I also get a uh, permanent pen and I'll write little mantras on it. It's like, I've got a drop bag down here, not very often. I've got, how much do you want this? You know, so how much do you really want this race? And make today your day and deliver on your prep for the other things I've got written on my drop bag. And all this just helps, you know, it just helps, right, really distill the determination that you've got to finish this race. Um, and how much you really want this. Um, so once you've got your drop bag, that's the first thing that you need to think about. Make sure it's the right size and um, is strong enough to carry your kit. When you're putting your drop bag together, I think it's not just important to think what you're putting in, it's important to think what order you're putting stuff in because you want to have the most available stuff right at the top. So I'm going to go in reverse order now. So to think about actually packing the checkpoint and what order I put stuff in. So the first things I put in would be my change of clothes. A dry pair of gloves is often a really nice idea because if it's wet, the gloves tend to get really wet. I'd go for a spare, full spare set of clothes, if I'm honest. You know, there's no harm. If it's really soaking wet, it could be quite a boost to get put some warm clothes on. Definitely a, pair, a spare pair of socks. I put all of this in a, in a dry bag and I'd stick it right at the bottom of my rucksack. This is because this is emergency kit that I probably wouldn't be planning to use, but it would be kit that if I needed to use it, it would be really useful to have it there. Put a spare soft flask in. You know, if you break a soft flask halfway through a race, it can be really, really frustrating. If you have a spare rucksack, you know, why not? You know, if you don't have one, you don't need to buy one for this purpose, but if you've got a spare one, why not? If your rucksack goes wrong halfway through a race or you rip it on a tree, you know, that's gonna be a serious problem for you. So if you've got one, and stick it, why not stick it in your drop bag? It doesn't take up much room. I'd also put a spare, spare head torch in, and a spare map, and a spare compass. Those would be the things that I'd be really only using in an emergency. And I'd do the dry bag up, and I'd stick that right at the bottom of my drop bag. So there, that's emergency kit that I'll only plan to use if something's really gone wrong. Cool, so I'll stick that in. 
The other thing that I'll stick in at the bottom of my drop bag is um, it's a spare pair of shoes. Now, I probably wouldn't change my shoes just because they're wet. But again, you know, shoes go wrong, the lace breaks, like the sole comes off your shoe. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a race ending, em, you know, emergency. So I definitely put a spare pair of shoes in. Try to make them a pair of shoes that you've actually already used um, rather than a brand new pair of shoes for obvious reasons. You know, you should never use new kit in a race. Um, after I've done that, after I put the shoes and the spare emergency kit in, I then, I always put a towel in the drop bag. You know, it can be quite nice. You know, if you're really sopping wet, you can dry your hands, you know, dry your face before you start to do all of the other tasks you've got to do at a checkpoint. I then would also make sure that I've got a, the next thing I've put in is a blister kit. Um, now, blisters can be an absolute nightmare. Getting your feet, get, and knowing what your blisters do, foot care strategy is and blister care strategy, um, for the checkpoints at halfway can be really, really good. So put in a blister kit, put some scissors in, in the first aid kit, and put in a load of spare, a spare blister kits, um, a spare blister passes and things like that. Anything that you've used in the past that you know works for you, stick it in there. If in doubt, put more in. It doesn't take up much room, it doesn't add much weight, and it can be a real, real blessing at halfway to be able to just repatch, really patch your feet up in a, in a way that you know works for you. In addition to that, once that's gone in, I'd put some, uh, put, some, put some lube in, basically. Some Vaseline, whatever it is you usually use, either for your feet or for any spots that are rubbing, I think it's always gonna be, always gonna be really, really useful. Um, I would then make sure you've got any batteries that you need to, uh, to change for your electronic kit. These can be head torch batteries or batteries for your GPS or anything else where you know you can change batteries um, in, your, in your kit that you're using. If you, make sure you've got the right ones, obviously, um, and enough of them. If you are at a checkpoint that you're gonna be staying for a long time, like something like on the spine race, make sure you've got charging cables and potentially a power bank as well, so then you're not dependent on making sure that you can plug your kit in. And then, one of the last things I'd, well, the, the, now the main thing that I'd think about and I'd put in last would be my food supply. So what I really like to do with my food supply is I will, um, I will always take, if I've got a checkpoint at halfway in a race, I'll take enough food to get me to that checkpoint and I'll then empty out all of the food I haven't used, stick it in the drop bag and I'll pull out a, new, a completely new bag of food, put it, in my, put it in my pouch so I know exactly what I've got in there. And if you've already packaged it up like this or packed then it's, re it's really, really easy to pick it up and stick it straight in your bag. This is a real problem. You know, if, you, if you don't do this right, this can end up being a real problem. So make sure this is your priority when you get to a checkpoint and you don't leave without your food. One other thing I'd always put in as well that I, I personally really like is, um, is a couple of water sterilizing tabs. I always have those with my, um, with my food, just in case you know, your, your soft glass leaks or you run out of water halfway through, you're not then forced to drink some water that might be quite dodgy without sterilizing it. And these things work really well, basically. Um, look into, there's various different types, look into the type that you want to buy, but I'd always just stick a few in those, of those in as an emergency. I mentioned it earlier, the last thing I'd put in would be the treat that I want to have. You know, so as soon as you open up your drop bag, you've got your thing of chocolate milk, or you've got your chocolate bar, or you've got something that you don't really want to carry all the way around the race, but it's, a really, it's something you really like, and you think you're probably in advance, so you're gonna really enjoy having it. So I'd put that in last, so that that's, the, well, as soon as I open it up, I'll just get that down, however it is, and, um, and then I can go through the rest of my checkpoint plan. Um, other things that people might wanna put in would be, you know, if you, depending on what your strategy is for your poles, you might wanna leave those in your drop bag and pick them up in the second half of the race. You might want a spare pole, um, you know, because it's not unheard of on things like the Pennine Way, to, to jam a pole in between a couple of slabs and push forward and break one. I've seen people break poles in the past. And you know, if you do have the option of putting one in a drop bag, why not if you've got space? Um, anything else really you can think of. And then once you've done, once you've done all that, you've, you've, you've made the plan, you've done the strategy, um, stick it all in a drop bag, put it together, and make sure it complies with the race rules. Just, you know, if it needs to be weighed, weigh it. If it's a size thing, just look at the size. Then 
when you get to the bag and you're implementing your strategy, again, the last thing I want to say, just to reiterate one more time, is make sure you've got all your compulsory kit with you that you need for the rest of the race. Because as soon as you leave, you don't want to be suddenly remembering having to go back or risking being disqualified. I hope that's been useful. Um, yeah, let me know any comments. It'd be great to hear them. And um, best of luck in the race. And I hope this drop bag strategy goes well. Mm -hmm.